Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Palo Alto, uh, California, with uh, uh, the good weather here. I hope you are all being safe and healthy, uh, sheltered in place, and, and uh, uh, taking care of yourselves. Um, today, I'm going to share a, a very brief version of what is a much deeper deck um, uh, about the Migration Storytelling Project. And I, I thought I would start off by uh, explaining why we're doing this. Um, about five years ago, uh, some friends, uh, Angeliki and Mariana, uh, uh, who were hosting a gathering for journalists reporting on the migration through Lesbos in Greece, um, we got to talking. And I really didn't, uh, as a person who grew up in Philadelphia and Jewish, uh, I, I had no way to conceptualize um, the um, and to relate to the reasons for or even the uh, destinations and starting points for the migrants. And as we got to talking, it seemed that journalists were uh, somewhat in, in the same mode, uh, that every day there's a new story of a new migrating people, and how do you tell the story of that people in a way that the readers of your uh, newspaper or, or media feed would, would relate to as personal? And so what came out of those discussions was a project that's now uh, housed in the Center for Human Rights and that we call the Migration Storytelling Project. And we are starting with the journey of the Sikh peoples. Uh, and and you'll, explain, you'll, you'll see in a sec. Migration really is the story of our species. Many, many uh, thousands of years of migration that have led to amazing discoveries, um, have, have also accounted for disruptions, and um, yet there's perhaps a common arc to each of the migrations. What we uh, tend to do is to think that our ancestral journeys, each of our um, heritages, is unique. And but it has some common elements. Um, we think that there's the if you thought of building, let's say, a periodic table of the elements of migration, you would have some causes for oppression, economic. Now we have a pandemic, and soon we have a, a recession. But there'll be all kinds of reasons why uh, people choose to or are forced to leave where they were, um, they start their journey and they find um, some places along the way that they can settle and places that they're not allowed to settle for those settlements. And then um, at the end, perhaps uh, if the conditions are right, they get to return to their homeland. Um, but along the way, there's a lot of cross pollination of culture that and culture that goes, and there's an exchange of the values in in that. Um, we, we want to be able to mine the artifacts of the various migrating peoples. So there are sacred texts in, in the case of religious uh, groups. There are uh, journals and newspaper accounts. There are uh, business records, etc. cetera. Uh, there are even recipes where spices could have only come from one part of the world, but they were transla transplanted by a certain people going through uh, the neighboring areas. How could we use not only the ancient 
uh, a numerous of like DNA testing and, and 23 and me genetic testing um, to assemble what was the journey and the drivers of the journey of a migrating people and um, the factors that would have led their story to intersect with another migrating or resident people's story. And it's really the convergences of those story elements, almost like intersections at a stoplight, that prove that one or both stories were probably true, or prove that one was less likely true. So if you picture a hole on a wall, a uh, circle on a wall, you know it's a hole because it's a circle, but you also know it's a hole because there's a wall around it. But we're going to use those kinds of machine learning methods to try to ascertain what are those periodic table elements. This is a quote from Michael Crichton, uh, author of Jurassic Park and, and other famous uh, uh, science fiction novels. If you don't know history, then you don't know anything. And uh, you are just the leaf that doesn't know you're part of a tree. And in fact, we've been thinking about migrations as this almost um, defective part of a human uh, group's experience, when in fact it is part of the tree that we all have, have inherited as uh, our legacy of, of knowledge. Here's the leadership for the project. I am a, an Ashoka Fellow. Um, I'm a lecturer at Stanford Engineering and co-founder of Urban Logic. I'm a recovering Wall Street lawyer and Hong Kong merchant banker and geospatial technology finance pioneer. Um, my uh, uh, collaborators from the center are David Cohen and Jesse Brunner. Uh, they are very well-known activists in the human rights movement uh, and commissions. <clears throat> Excuse me. For um, purposes of the prototype that we're running in the Sikh peoples, Rav, uh, Rav Neet has been an amazing ally and uh, a thought partner uh, so that we can understand how different but how similar the, the Sikh journey might be. Um, and when we use um, the, the purpose of this project is to, to see what are the common elements. You know, many, many peoples, uh, especially migrant peoples, think that they are not being understood uh, because they are not being understood. They, they think that the the particular town that they would have come from or the particular rural, rural or, or, or uh, factor that led them to migrate um, uh, is, is unique, and, and it is. But as, a, um, as an element of proving that their journey happened, uh, of, tell, of preserving the memory of why the journey happened, what they would have accomplished had they stayed or been allowed to stay where they were. Uh, this is this is hard for even the the uh, migrating people to to factor. So a lot of the project is about establishing a new language or a common language, um, and and that's um, even more possible today because of machine learning and AI and natural language processing. Can we have a computer read the ancient texts um, and understand from them and the parables that are in them? Uh, what are the uh, motivating factors? What is the belief system of the people? And how is that belief system um, helped or hurt by the journey that they uh, endured. So, so building that language uh, from and, and being able to use the same language of this is why we had to move, 
This is why we were able to settle in places and prosper. This is why perhaps we, these are the factors that we might be able to use to return to the homeland. Those, knowing that would help in foreign policy, in uh, nonprofit <clears throat> and development work, in reducing the causes of terrorism, just by knowing what are these causal elements and how do we affect them. Um, but most of all, as I started uh, this talk, this is about creating a, a basis for empathy. How can I, as a Jewish person, with the diaspora uh, and migrations uh, that my ancestors would have gone through uh, from the Ukraine and from Portugal, how do I relate to the Sikh journey? And it turns out that there are really you know, powerful a uh, common element. Uh, there were property rights that were changed. There were um, persecutions. There were, uh, you know, all kinds of promises made and and not felt, not kept. In the case of the Sikh people, uh, they are very. Uh, they were uh, a very uh, fierce. Um, fighting force that was part of how they maintained their uh their control um uh, and british asked them to fight in in both wars uh promising them their homeland that hasn't really happened well this this is a continual cycle of um let us let us try to give the promise that a particular ethnic group might want and use them and, and not fulfill the promise. These, in, in the process of those promisings, um, people, you give them out and then back on those uh, capability happen. So, as I've suggested, um, we, we would like to build a periodic table of the element for particular uh, journalistic stories, media stories about whatever migrating people we would want to talk about, whether it's from Latin America or from uh, the Middle East or, or wherever, Africa. Um, and that when a story the catalyst for this migration was a persecution or was a denial of legal rights or was whatever the, the element we, we end up, uh, however we end up naming them based on the, the analytics, um, that would signal the reader to identify with the ancient and ancestral story that they have, that I have, that you have. Um, so this is some of the work that's going on. Um, we, uh, uh, we've been exploring how to do this. We've been getting help from the Sikh uh, people uh, to, uh, and their scholars to understand what source material is available and how we might get access to it and mine it. Um, interestingly, some of what we've learned is, is unique and most Sikhs would not would not know uh, that, and so a part of the per, the project may seemingly be to inform um, each ethnic group of more of its history. Um, the journey, the the reason we chose the Sikhs is it's a real, they are a relatively recent ethnically identified group, uh, going back to a, a 1600. And that means that they've been around as long as the printing press. And so there's more written evidence, um, more variety of written evidence of their journey for us to be able to mine. Um, and, you know, they live in a part of the world. Um, uh, they come from the area between Pakistan, modern Pakistan and, and uh, India. 
uh, in the Punjab region. Uh, their empire was uh, akin to uh, a version of the Ottoman Empire, and they had many, many academic accomplishments and, and uh, uh, other math and science accomplishments. Um, and so one, one of the profound elements so far of this project has been asking the Sikh people you've been fighting for so long, what would be the basis on which you would um, uh, govern the homeland were you to get it back uh, or to have it? And, and I think that's a, a novel question maybe for, for every uh, migrating people because it's been so long since they've been able to assure themselves of their homeland. Um, but it's a, a profound question when, when, when asked of people who, who really believe in, in their ethnic um, certainty. Um, the Sikh kingdom has gone through many uh, gurus, uh, their king, in essence, their, their kings, and, and each of them have had to deal with neighboring influences or foreign influences like the British um, and the Indian. Uh, nation now. Um, we, we really hope that the project provides um, the source material, the source code, so to speak, or, or bridges to get to the source code for understanding and migrating people, and that this would be an open platform um, in the nature of a Wikipedia or whatever, uh, that we would house the records that we're finding in digital archives so that they would be more accessible and um, that the storytelling that comes from migration would be um, easier to compare and easier to uh, uh, accommodate as it naturally flows through a resettlement process as we're seeing in Africa in Africa, and certainly in, in Europe and, and the States. Um, that instead of migration being a political disease, it becomes a, um, a human uh, condition that everyone thinks uh, to their own heritage has been accommodated on behalf of them. Uh, and with that, I'm uh, happy to take any questions that we have in the room. Um, here's my uh, Stanford email um, and, and whatever you, you would like to do in chat or, or however you'd like to, to do this, I can stop the, the screen share. Um, so uh, thanks for coming. I had no idea who would be coming to our talk. So, so thank you for, for coming. Um, and uh, uh, Jami, I'll, I'll, if, uh, if you can email me your, your uh, address, uh, your, your email address, that'd be fine um, uh, to send you the, the slides. We're, uh, this is very much early days for this project. Um, and uh, we're doing some fundraising now. And, and I hope that uh, that this was a little different, certainly, than the water talk and maybe some of the other talks you'll hear today. Thanks to certainly uh, Michael and, uh, and others who put this together. This was quite, uh, quite, a, quite a big May Day effort. So I, I very much appreciate being included. Um, And it's good to see friends like Kathy and Andrea um, and, and uh, on the call. So um, <laughs> uh, the, the other part of this is, is how many of these prototypes we're going to go through. Um, there will be many prototypes. Uh, obviously, once you do a Sikh prototype, uh, people who have a Hindu uh, heritage might might want to be included, and and that would be a natural uh, flow for this project. That that the alternative versions of truth could be 
accommodated through this mechanism. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, Kathy is referring to our, our common roots doing the National Geospatial uh, uh, Intelligence uh, work in the 90s that led in part to uh, Google Maps. But Kathy is the one who, who very much led that charge within the Federal Geographic Data Committee. So uh, fantastic to, to see you. So. Um, Well, um, if there are no questions about the migration storytelling um, project, uh, feel free to suggest ways to, um, I can go back to my slide, uh, feel free to suggest ways to, um, you know, include other elements of the migration stories that you know or that are your heritage is, um, in, in my case, uh, you know, starting and growing up in Philadelphia, moving to New York for 25 years, and then out to Palo Alto at Stanford. Um, and, and so there's a lot of migration that we all are doing. And, and the more that we are able to understand that that's normal and responsible, in choosing our our futures, then the more healthy migration will happen, but also settlement and and you know understanding of the people who are migrating through our towns will will happen. Clearly, the COVID nineteen and the recession that's coming from it uh, will force an enormous amount of migration as people seek to find um, uh, work and shelter and food. Um, so we're we're going to see a lot more migration, and it's good that we could try to understand it and and uh, help it happen. Um, so with that, I think I am five minutes early in my half hour time slot, and uh, I'm I'm not sure who's running the room, but if the next speaker wants to use those five minutes, I I can donate them to to the next speaker and, and that would be fine uh, rather than using up the, the valuable time. Um, so uh, th this is the rem this is the remotest I've been able to do on Zoom uh, is, is not exactly knowing who's running the show. Um, so so I'll kick it back to whoever from uh, unit is uh, is in charge have a great day have uh, have a great uh, weekend and please stay safe and healthy and, and exercise some some smarts about how you how you interact okay ciao thank you bruce bye -bye. it's amazing work <laughs> thank you thanks andrea bye everybody